My talk is on human cultural universals, how and where they differ. The aim of my talk is to explore issues in the differences, differences between human and animal culture, primarily by using human cultural universals as common denominators of humans. I will first define and discuss culture, then universals, and then present several particular human cultural universals that appear to have been pivotal in distinguishing human from animal culture, primarily by enhancing the transmission of culture. <coughs> Two psychological factors that may underlie differences in human and other primate culture will also be briefly discussed. One concerns the way culture is learned and one concerns the moralization or ritualization of human culture. Let me point out at the beginning that when I agreed to give this talk, I assumed that culture is culture and that humans are not alone in having it, although they have a lot more of it than any other animal. Like, I am sure, the vast majority of cultural anthropologists, I have been more concerned with the content of culture than with the most basic processes or mechanisms by which individual organisms acquire and transmit culture. Animal behaviorists, by contrast, have necessarily focused on the basics as a means of distinguishing cultural behaviors from the remainder of the behaviors their subject species engage in. On reading the edited volume, right there, The Question of Animal Culture, I began to see that there might be fundamental differences. That volume and my own book on human universals are the principal sources for this talk. The concept of culture. The concept of culture, which, which is at the core of anthropology, was defined very broadly at the 19th century beginnings of academic anthropology as follows. That complex whole, which includes knowledge, belief, art, law, morals, custom, and any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of society. Attempts to refine a more abstract and agreed upon definition of culture from then onward have failed. But however it is defined, it is agreed that culture is passed on from generation to generation in a manner that involves learning rather than specific genetic programming. And besides being transmitted from generation to generation, culture may also be transmitted horizontally between individuals and groups. Examples of culture are tools and tool making, kinship terminologies, dance, divination, magic, trade, and very much more, which in each case may take distinct forms among peoples who are genetically indistinguishable. Culture is divisible into traits, that is single items, and complexes, which are more or less integrated or institutionalized collections of traits. Culture typically is thought of as though it were attached to or identified with particular groups or societies or peoples. The transmission vertically between generations and horizontally from individuals to individuals through learning is called social learning. And there is substantial agreement that social learning is a necessary condition for culture. If social learning is also considered a sufficient condition for culture, then many species besides humans have culture, and this has been known for decades. Recent research by animal behaviorists, including students of non-human primates, has substantially increased our knowledge of non-human culture and the conditions that both underlie and result from it. However, this research has very much raised the issue of whether social learning is really all there is to culture, with, only, with the only remaining comparative issue being one of the degree to which such learning takes place, or alternatively, whether there are some defining features of human culture that make it fundamentally distinct from animal culture. On the one hand, this is a semantic problem, how to define culture. But it is, it is also a serious scientific matter. If chimpanzees, for example, share the crucial mental ingredients for culture with humans, it would be reasonable to hypothesize that chimpanzee and human culture are homologous, meaning that each species' capacity for culture traces to their common ancestry. If, however, human culture is something distinct, then such similarities as there are between chimpanzee and human cultures make them analogous but independent developments. 
Some scholars argue that fundamental features of human culture are far more recent than the split between chimpanzees and humans. If that is correct, animal and human culture are, ju are not just two points along a single line of cultural development. To emphasize the difference between human culture and animal culture, some scholars say that animals have traditions, but not culture. Others use such terms as protoculture for animals, reserving culture for humans. Some scholars, drawing attention to a distinction of process and content, wonder whether the same basic psychological processes underlie social learning in both humans and other primates. I will return to the issue of underlying psychological processes later. Human cultural universals. Getting back to definitions, a cultural universal is a cultural trait or complex that is found in all or nearly all human societies, though not necessarily in all individuals in every society. Thus, cooking is found in all societies, but not every individual cooks, not even every normal adult. Some form of leadership is found in all societies, though not all, individual, not all individuals are leaders. Given the apparently strong tendencies for culture to vary considerably from one society to another, anthropologists have sometimes thought that cultural traits or complexes that are the same in all cultures throughout the world were very unlikely to exist. However, they do exist, and we can think of them as providing a sort of baseline for the comparison of human culture with that of the other primates or of animal, other animals in general. While the antiquity of most cultural universals is not known, the age area hypothesis that anthropologists employ for tentative dating of cultural items suggests that cultural universals must have been around for a very long time. The age area hypothesis is that the wider the distribution of a cultural trait or complex, the older it is. Given that cultural universals have the widest possible distribution, they should also have the greatest antiquity, unless they are among those very few traits that have spread to the whole or nearly the whole of humanity in the very recent past, what with globalization, examples being the phosphorus match and plastic sheeting. Now, on to the major differences. What are the major differences? One of the most dramatic and frequently cited is quantitative the volume and complexity of human culture, even in the simplest societies. I'm sorry, that volume and complexity, even in the simplest societies, should probably be seen as an order of magnitude greater than in any primate society or in any non-human primate species as a whole. This can be illustrated by one of the principal topics in the study of animal culture, tool use. Quite a number of species, and not only primates, use tools. Quite a number of, uh, uh, but human tool use is distinctive in the universally large number of tools they use, the permanence of their tools, their use of tools to make tools, and the universality of particular kinds of tools, containers, founders, cutters, the spear, and some sort of string-like material for interweaving or tying. A large part of the complexity of human culture flows from another of the most dramatic and frequently cited differences, human speech, which itself is not a cultural difference. However, given the evolved capacity for speech, each actual language is transmitted culturally from individuals to individuals, group to group. A great many further differences between humans and other primates consist primarily of linguistic phenomena, so that many of the human cultural universals are language dependent often consisting of labels or classificatory sets of labels. But in many cases, these pose serious prob problems of whether in substance they are really all that different. For example, numeracy is considered a human cultural universal. Yet the simplest forms of human numeracy encode number systems as simple as one, few, and many. There is experimental and other evidence to indicate that some animal species are also able to grasp and act upon a sense of quantification that is approximately the same, even though they do not have a verbal number system. There are many other language-dependent cultural universals that show marked cultural differences from society to society, but that also might very well be a putting of names 
on matters that other species are cognitive of, such as classification of plant and animals, plants and animals, or the recognition of emotional states. In spite of the ongoing problem of determining the real difference in such cases, no one doubts the extraordinary impact of language on the growth and spread of human culture. There is good reason to assume that language allowed for a considerable increase in the efficiency of cultural transfer. The existence of narratives in all human societies is another feature of human speech, speech with profound implications for the growth and spread of human culture. Narrative allows, for example, a sort of beginning to end explanation of complex behaviors, which among its many benefits also allows greater efficiency of cultural transfer. Greater efficiency of transfer may account for much of what has been called the ratchet effect in human culture, its capacity for transforming cultural traits or building one trait on another to achieve more variation and or complexity through time. The ratchet effect is either absent or very limited in such culture as has been observed in other species. Two of the non-linguistic human cultural universals of very great impact are the use of fire and the specific use of fire to cook food. Fire allowed illumination in the dark, protection from predators, movement into colder, colder climates, and the facilitation of tool making. Cooked foods are much more digestible than uncooked, allowing a more easily obtained and richer diet. In combination, fire and cooking surely loom large in the explanation of the very different demographics of humans and other primates. Humans spread throughout the world, which allowed, if not required, varying cultural adaptations. And humans achieved population densities that brought differing peoples into the sorts of contacts that would, make, that would facilitate lateral cultural transmission. It is that context of wide dispersal, but with potential for direct and indirect contact between populations that allowed trade to spring up between human groups. Trade, as opposed to one-on-one -on -one exchanges that go no further, is another of the human cultural universals that sets them apart from other animals. Trade facilitates cultural exchange. Thus, by altering the demographics of humans, fire and cooking have also contributed substantially to a heightened efficiency of cultural transmission and very possibly to cultural innovation. Underlying psychological processes, in some ways more radical in their implications for distinguishing between cultural development among humans and non-human primates are two specific processes of cultural transmission that humans may uniquely employ. One is that the basic learning systems of humans and other primates suggest a difference of emulation versus imitation. In emulation, one individual does something and another individual focusing on the result then engages in trial and error learning to achieve the same result. In the case of imitation, the second individual focuses on how the, in the first individual <coughs> achieved the desired result and then tries to duplicate the appropriate actions to get the result. Children, human children, seem much more inclined to focus on the actions than other species do. There is some debate as to whether any non-human primate species regularly engages in imitation. Again, the difference suggests greater efficiency of cultural transmission among humans. In this case, however, the difference is traced to a psychological rather than cultural factor that is to a difference in the way the mind works. Before moving on to the second psychological process, let me note an important, apparently cultural difference that is closely related to imitation, and that is deliberate instruction or teaching. Deliberate instruction is universal in human societies, but apparently absent among the other primates. In this case, yet again, efficiency of cultural transfer is surely the result. The second difference may be the second difference that may be psychological rather than cultural is that humans, even children, when they imitate or teach, are likely to stress that there is a right way and a wrong way to do things. This insistence on a sort of moralization of procedure, a sort of ritualizing of everyday activities, is taken by some scholars to be, a uniquely, human, to be uniquely human and designed to mark one group from another. That is to be an aspect of ethnocentrism. 
this moralized or normative cultural marking of our way versus the way of others has no obvious counterpart in other primates, but leaves a strong mark on human cultures. Moralizing the way of doing things seems directly related to another human universal, the distinction between nature and culture. Everywhere, humans see a sharp distinction between themselves and the animal world, even though they may claim a special relationship to or revere certain animals. Animals in general are seen by humans to lack the morality that governs our world. Sometimes other peoples are accused of the same thing. Now in summary, let me now confess that unlike other speakers you will hear today, I am not a frontline researcher on any of the topics I have mentioned. Even my work on human universals consisted largely of summarizing other people's work. So note the frequency with which I use words like may or suggest or apparently to indicate tentative conclusions or assessments. You may get some corrections later in the day from speakers here who are indeed in the front line of research on culture. But the main conclusions that you should take away from my talk are as follows. Some human cultural universal, universals, which we can presume to be of considerable antiquity, have enhanced the ease of transmission of culture among humans. If we imagine cultural development as a sort of race, humans have a supercharged engine for transmitting culture. Narrative and intentional instruction directly enhance transmission of culture. Fire and cooking do it indirectly by altering the demographics of humans. To give another sports analogy, fire and cooking put more players on the field on the human side. The evolution of human speech and the many languages that flowed from it is also, uh, also greatly enhanced the transmission of human culture. A specific mode of learning, imitation as opposed to emulation, presumably also enhances transmission of culture. These enhancements to the speed or ease of cultural transmission among humans go a long way to explain why the ratchet effect is so apparent in human culture as a whole. While not enhancing cultural speed, and maybe even slowing it down some, the moralization of human culture put a stamp on it that apparently is not shared with other primates, but that accounts for many of the peculiarities of human culture. Moreover, that same moralization is closely connected to the universal distinction between nature and culture, the belief that human beings are not like other animals, or at least not like our kind of human beings. Thank you.